Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Orange Bloods Texas Football Channel on YouTube. I'm Jeff Ketchum, joined, as always, by Anwar Richardson. We're both men in black today. This is happening a little bit too much, like the second time in a week where we both had on the same color apparel. Uh, we'll try to limit that in the future, but, you know, who's to say? We, we, don't, we don't plan these things. Uh, we don't even completely plan our content, but... Anwar and I have come up with what I think will be a pretty interesting topic today. And before we get into it, hit the like button. Do us a solid, hit the like button. If at any point you're like, hey, the two bald guys said something funny, mm -hmm. like it, subscribe to it. Either one of those things would be fantastic for us. We're talking Arch Manning today, Mr. Richardson. Mm -hmm. We're dipping into recruiting a little bit. Yeah, we're going I like that. I know, I know there's always a little bit of both apprehension but excitement at the same time because we have converted you a little bit. Oh, yeah. To a recruiting nut, but not so much that you ever just want to get on and, like, pretend that you know it frontwards and backwards. Not, and, and not to the point that I actually want to be, like, contacting guys on Sundays after visits. <laughs> I don't want to ever do that again. I did that as a high school writer back in Tampa. I, I never want to actually have to do that again, but it, it's, a, it's, it's fun to watch other people work. It was the thing that you were worried about the most when I first approached you about coming to Orange Bloods. Yeah, it's not because a, a people don't understand like the, what the amount of work that goes into being a recruiting writer. I mean, it is it, it's staying in constant contact and, and things have even changed now. Like back in the day, catch when I did recruiting, guys pretty much just announced, right? I mean, that you just they took a couple of visits and then they decided, like, you know, maybe they're leaning somewhere. They announced maybe some guys flip here and there. Now, guys come out with their top 50. First of all, not, not even before they get to the top 15 list or top 20. First of all, they're blessed to receive an offer by every school, right? And I understand this. Well, that is a blessing, right? It is a blessing, but you have to keep on top of every single offer that they receive and every single offer that they want to treat out. And some guys just tweet out stuff for the attention, knowing that they'll never go to those schools. But you got you to see which offers they're blessed to receive by. And then they start with their top list. And sometimes it's 15, sometimes it's 20. And they've got every fan base like coming at them. And then they've got to narrow it down. And then it's unofficials. Stop and playing. You love it. Nah. You, you know what it because you know what it does it allows you to be old man richardson 20 years before you're old oh yeah oh yeah you're i got old, some old man in me the, i'm stopping you you're in the middle of a back in the day story i am because i am an old man because back in my day they just showed up at the high school gym and they they signed their paperwork yeah. and they didn't have edits and they didn't have videos and they didn't and they didn't weren't talking about for the next three years Four, if I'm unfortunate, I'm going to go to this school. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Anyway, no, well, look, old man ran over. Old man ran over. I'm glad you were able to get that out of your yeah, system. I did. I did. That's well, why I wouldn't do, don't want to know. do it. Those things are lingering. You just never quite know it until until they're out. And then you just better. Look, Arch Manning is not a 2022 recruit. So we're not talking about a guy that's going to be making a decision that's going to be on campus this fall or – you know, I guess not even next fall, right? Like this is a kid who, even if he's an early enrollee, is a 2023 prospect or several seasons away from where he would be uh, a factor on the field. Like it's funny to talk about, and we can even get into this discussion, what it would mean for Steve Sarkeesian to have a tw two seasons away. Uh, that would be his third season in Austin and, you know, there, there's some interesting dynamics of what it means to be a new coach and planning three years ahead when we are already spending so much time talking about this season, 2021. But look, Arch Manning moves the needle. I mean, a week ago, The Athletic puts out on war a deep dive on Manning that I thought was really spectacular, to be fair. I wish I was looking at the article right now. I would give the writer a little bit of love, but he had access to Arch Manning, to his family, to his coaches. I mean, it was a really good feature. An intro, you know, this guy had the ability to tell the Arch Manning story first. 
He's not, he doesn't have to worry about after 20 Arch Manning stories have been written, how do I make it different than everybody else? He got to tell the first story and I thought he did a really good job. It identifies Texas as a school that Manning would be seriously interested in. I think that, uh, I, in my head, Clemson and Texas are probably the two schools that as of today might be betting favorites, but Clemson and Texas, one of those two schools sticks out more than the other when you say them out loud right now. And it needs to be said that when Arch Manning made his first official unofficial visit this past weekend, Clemson is where he went, uh, but Texas is going to get a visit from Arch Manning. Like he's coming to town and the Longhorns are in this. And there's no doubt that Arch Manning to Texas would be a signature recruiting win for Steve Sarkeesian, no matter when the guy shows up. I mean, Arch Manning, the guy's got feature stories written on him before he goes into his junior year in high school because he's a Manning, because he comes from the family tree. And so there's a conversation to be had about what getting a guy like Manning would mean for Sarkeesian. And then there's a conversation to be had about what does Texas need to do to realistic on the field this season to realistically put itself into a position where if the betting favorites are Clemson and Texas, how does Texas win that battle for one of maybe the most high profile national prospect in the country two years from now? Yeah, and you know, for those who don't know, uh, Arch Manning is the son of Cooper Manning. So, yeah. and, and so you know, so it, sometimes they, they, it's not Peyton, it's not Eli, it's, the, it's Cooper, who unfortunately is sometimes known as the other brother of the Mannings, but uh, really had a, a good career up until he got hurt uh, up, up in college. I think it was like a do you have like a neck injury or, or something like that catch? Uh, maybe look that up. I think it was like a spinal stenosis or something like that, if I'm correct. But um, in any case, that being said, um, he's, he, he's like, all right, my, my brothers have done this. I was unable you know, to finish my career, but all I'm going to do is produce another one in, in our legacy, uh, a stud who, uh, like to your, your point, is viewed as what was the number one prospect uh, in the country. And, you know, to, it's going to be what's going to be interesting for me, Catch. I mean, it's a few years from now. I will be interested to see. And I know you said so you talked Clemson and you, obviously you've taught, um, you know, Texas. It'll be interesting, one, to see if, we, if there's a Manning that actually goes outside the SEC. Right. I mean, we've there. there's some history there with this family in the SEC. And of course, you know, being in, in the South, you know, that they are in in, in in Louisiana. So I'll be interested to see if if someone like Sarkeesian could pull that out where it's 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 a real heavy influence. But obviously, Clemson's not in the SEC. Clemson right. obviously is in the ACC. So that makes a little bit of a difference. It shows that maybe this young man is trying to create his own path and trying to create his own legacy and won't be swayed by that. Um, you know, where do you want to start in that conversation? Because it's, it's multi-layered catch. Is it, or do you want to start with what Sarkeesian will need to do? Do you want to start with what they need to, what he needs to see? Um, it's very, cause it's very, there's a def, definitely some ways oh, we can go. I think that let's just start at the top for a second, because when we talk about quarterback recruiting, it, the, the Quinn Ewers decommitment from Texas during the season may have been the thing that that might have legitimately been the nail in the coffin for Tom Herman, right? I mean, yeah. it, it came at a horrible time. His commitment was such a big deal when it happened that losing it made it infinitely worse. And I think there had been this... It, because we saw this with Shaka Smart a little bit when Greg Brown was waiting to make his decision. And there was this thought of, well, if you get rid of Shaka Smart, you can't get Greg Brown. And do we really want to try that? Like, wouldn't we want to wait a year, let them get Greg Brown, and then just see what that looks like? Now, in the end, <laughs> that did not work out. Mm -hmm. Greg Brown came, but he didn't have the big year. But you know why people did that? 
I think Tom Herman with Quinn Ewers committed. And if Ewers is Jimmy Chitwood, right? If he's going into the school assembly and saying, I stay, coach stays, coach goes, mm-hmm. I go. I Quinn Ewers registers enough. There, you know, the Board of Regents know that name enough that it might have made a little bit of a difference. But the Definitely. moment that he peeled off, there was nothing saving Tom Herman at that point. So I, I so we know how impactful, uh, just as recent as the last six months, we know how impactful these types of prospects are. So just from your vantage point, because again, Arch Manning will show up in year three of the Steve Sarkeesian era. No matter where he goes to play college football, the Steve Sarkeesian era will be underway in a way where people will be making determinations. People will have opinions about how it's going. He'll either be on the hot seat or they'll be talking extension. So when we get to 2023, it'll be one of those two things. But something about, I mean, I've seen it. I've seen what the Manning name means in recruiting. Uh, I covered Eli Manning's recruitment. I was, I, I paid attention to it. When, I mean, I interviewed Eli Manning on the field and got yelled at by Texas officials when he made his official visit 20 plus years ago. That makes me feel really old, but that did happen. Um, in your mind, Arch Manning commits to Texas. That means what to Steve Sarkeesian? 30,000 feet in the air, big picture wise. What's that mean in your mind? What does it say? It, it, it's, it, it would mean a couple of things. It would mean one, this program is, is heading in a great direction. I mean, this, this is a program that at that point, um, is it been in the Big 12 championship and potentially won the Big 12 championship because I mean <laughs> he's got he's got options, right? And so you know, kids like that are are going to say, I necessarily want to go and fix a program. Like he don't he don't have to go fix anything. He didn't grow up as a quote unquote Texas fan that feels that he needs to go and fix his alma mater. You know, we you know, we talked about the pictures of Sam Ellinger as a kid. Sam Ellinger always wanted to go to Texas. Right. The, the, this kid is like, I'm just going to go to the best program. And so but if you get a guy like that, but by the way, I looked it up on Max Preps catch, you know, 40 uh, completions uh, catch uh, 516 attempts in, in his career, 4,360 passing yards, 55 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. That's it so far. And so, and then you have that name. So I think I look at him as a guy that with that Manning name, if Sarkeesian gets him, that ends up being the Pied Piper. Like, I think he's the guy that opens the door that everyone says, I want to play with that guy. Like, I think he has that kind of impact where people are people saying all throughout the country, don't matter who's who you may, you know, there's certain guys, you might be on the circuit, right. And you might have to know, who Cade Klubnick is through the camp circuit, right? The average person may not know. Everybody knows who the Manning is. Everybody knows what that name means. Everybody, to to your point, whether it's being talked about on on The Athletic, whether it's talked about on ESPN, it brings it, it it would bring so much attention. (laughs) You would almost feel like Texas is back if they're able to get you know, something like that. Remember, I put that in air quotes. So remember, if you guys quote me on Orange Bloods, I put that in air quotes, but you would feel like Texas. I think it would be a huge get. And from a recruiting standpoint, Catch, I'll, I'll shut up and I'll let you talk on this one. From a recruiting standpoint, that would be, Arch, Arch Manning would be the biggest get since who? In for the Texas Longhorns. Vince? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even Garrett Gilbert, because we're talking about, number, you know, Arch Manning, it's, it's really fascinating. If you go in the Rivals rankings, the Rivals currently has Arch Manning as the number three player in the entire country. That's because they've got a kid named Malachi Nelson, who is out of California, who almost everybody thinks is going to go to Oklahoma mm. as the basically they're like 1A and 1B of quarterbacks. So it will be interesting to watch that there, there are dynamics involved in, in 
you know, that that debate will eventually become a huge national story. I think you'll see those two players uh, compared in the way that we see kids in the state of Texas right now. We mentioned Club Nick when we talk about him and, you know, Weigman at AM and obviously yours committed to Ohio State. The way those three kids all year long as three either five star or borderline five star players will be compared to each other. Those two guys will be kind of synonymous with each other. We'll, recruiting fans will watch their careers and hold them up side by side. But I think as it relates to Manning, you nailed it. It is, it is a flag being put into the ground that does say from a national relevant standpoint in recruiting, it definitely symbolizes Texas is big time. And I think the reason why it's so important is because we've had a lot of conversations, you and I lately, about Texas has lost a little bit of the big time brand. They've lost a little bit of that luster with a decade of losing and with the lack of NFL draft results in the last few years. I mean, all you add it all up together and it gets you to this place where Texas could use a shot in the arm. And once upon a time, it was Chris Sims who did that for Texas right at the exact same time that Ricky Williams won the Heisman. Those two things happened in unison. I think Manning would kind of represent one half of that exact same thing that Matt Brown was able to do in his first year at Texas. Manning could represent that. It does present us with a segue though, because Texas doesn't get Chris Sims back in 1999 without Ricky winning the Heisman in 1998. So I am a believer that in order for Texas to get an Arch Manning, that it would, Texas got to do something. This can't be, it can't be eight and four and the expectation be, okay, we'll go beat Clemson now because Clemson really wants him. And, you know, I mean, Clemson will turn around and say he's the most important prospect we've had since Trevor Lawrence. And you know what? Our Trevor Lawrence like example is more relevant and means more today than yeah. your Vince Young story does. Yes. <laughs> Cause at that point, if we do the math, Arch may not have been born when Vince won the oh. national title. It's close. I think he was, but he, it has to be close. It, it's got to be very – I got to look – we would have to look it up, and someone may look it up on the comments, but, I mean, he, if, if he was born, he was, only, he was only one years old. I, I'm looking to see if Arch Manning has a Wikipedia page yet. He's a oh, so, sophomore. <laughs> check it out. He does. He does. Okay, what's, 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 what we got for a date of birth? It says born 2005. Damn. It actually says 2004 slash. So it doesn't have an actual birth date yet in, but there's a good chance that he was alive. He was one year old when Texas won the national championship. What do you remember from when the time that you were one catch? Take this down memory lane. How was, how was crawling like for you? You remember that? You remember oh, tummy yeah. time catch? And yeah. then, and then after tummy time, do you remember rolling over and watching a, a great old football game that you still remember to this day? Yeah. 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 No, I, look, that's what we're talking about. It, it be, so in order for Texas and let's just, let's just keep it through the prism for a moment of Clemson versus Texas. We know that Alabama is going to get involved. It's, it says so in this feature story that Alabama is, is going after him. I mean, everybody in the country, it, plus the other big time quarterback in this class, it would appear will be going to Oklahoma. So, you know, like there's, it, it, there's two guys, but one of them, Malachi Nelson, he may be on his way to Oklahoma. And I think a lot of people think that's going to happen. So that makes the value of Arch Manning so much more significant because as I'm looking at the rivals rankings for 2023, those two guys are at the top and there's nobody else in the same zip code as them. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm scrolling down. I'm into, I'm like at number 30. I still don't see it. Number 30 is a kid named Dante Moore out of Michigan, but you got two guys who are absolute five-star players 
one seems a lot more available than the other. And the one that's a lot more available than the other has a last name of Manning. To get that guy, you can't be like third in the Big 12 no. and non-relevant at the end of the year, right? No. I mean, that again, that's what I'm saying. Something like that can work with Sam Ellinger. Something like that could work when you when you have kids who've grown up and wanted to be a part of the program and been doing hook 'em horns since the time that they were kids. Absolutely, but when we talk about going from regional to national and going after and getting those kind of national guys, you talk about pulling those dudes out. You've got to be able to have a little cachet. Now, again. You know, you 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 would maybe give the, the staff credit for getting a guy like Bijan, right? You pull him out of Arizona and you get him here to Texas. Uh, but we, to your point, it's a Manning, it's a legacy. I mean, how many Super Bowls has this young man attended? I mean, what what has this? I mean, I got a Manning pa- passing camp. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like this is this is uh, this is a, a big. That's a big family. Like I'm, you know, someone's like, you know, duh, you're being re- obvious and redundant. So. To get a guy like that is what the whole point is. To get a guy like that, that's what I'm saying. Texas has got to be cash. They've got they've got to probably win it. They've got to probably win a Big Twelve title more than likely. You, and you've got to be in the conversation. You can't. You've got to be in the conversation of a top five. You know, being in the running. Like your name has to mean something if you're Texas in late November. Like they have to be talking about you in the CFP. Like Sundays have to matter. Catch. When CFP rankings come out, Sundays have to matter. Catch, when's the last time you you really have said, man, I got to find out what those CFP rankings are. I got to see where Texas is ranked. And that and that would have to change. You know, I, I don't have it since I've been on the beat, to be honest I with don't you. I know. It's been a while. Because <laughs> talk- it doesn't come out like this. We're not talking about AP polls. We're talking about the rankings, uh, uh, how, how important that is once once that, that comes in later in the season. That's the kind of progress that Sarkeesian would have to make. Now, if he can make that kind of progress and then get them to, you know, that prominent level, they got big games. We talked about a previous game against Alabama coming up soon, home at home uh, there. If you can do, if you can become nationally relevant, because I don't know if a guy like Arch Manning catch is going to be that moved by name, image, and likeness. Cause I get the feeling that wherever he goes, He'll 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 make whatever he'll need. No, it, it's not like one he's going to make more of one or the other. Like I think his name is his name, right? I mean, potentially more, but he's also a guy that's probably not hurting either. I mean, I don't think any of them are like, man, I don't know how we're going to pay our bills in this Manning house. So like, I think everybody's kind of good. So it will have to be mainly production wins on the field and feel like you can compete for a natty. You're talking Alabama, you're talking Georgia, you're talking uh, LSU has, I mean, he's an, the, the, a Manning has never gone to LSU. So LSU is all in Notre Dame, Stanford. It's funny, I was looking at this article uh, on The Athletic, by the way, I, since I'm looking at the article, the author of the article is a guy named Jeff Duncan. Don't really know him, but he did a really good job with this article. Among the coaches just last month that he did FaceTime visits with, Mac Brown, Brian Kelly, Lane Kiffin, Ed Ordron, Nick Saban, David Shaw, Kirby Smart, Dabo Swinney, and then Steve Sarkeesian. So, I mean, you just Tom, – Tom Herman wouldn't have been able to win this battle a year ago because – the expectations where you have got to start performing at levels that's going to allow me the Brocker Myers, they pick Alabama over Texas because at the end of the day, the proof wasn't in the pudding enough. And it does feel like on some level, Texas is going to have to have some proof in the pudding and they're going to have to do it this year because what you won't be able to do with Manning is next summer so they've got to answer it this season to some degree. Yeah. Because they won't get another shot before he makes a decision. He'll say all the nice things next May, right? Like, oh, man, I love Sark. I can really see myself there. I really want to see how they do on the field this year. I mean, that is the same as hearing he's a nice guy. I mean, it's, it's a death blow in recruiting. So they've got to make their impression now. They won't be able – 
they'll be in a better position next year to make that impression, but they just won't get that. They've got to make it now. And I think realistically, you're probably talking about a 10 and two type season, which I think would have Texas very nationally relevant at that point. You're probably playing in the big 12 championship game at 10 and two, maybe not, but I think that probably gets you in if you're Texas that's got you borderline top 10. That's got you Texas at 10 and two, even if they're not in the big 12 championship game is playing in a major bowl game. I think at that point, I mean, I could easily see them in a cotton bowl or something like that. So, you know, I think that registers, but I think if you, if you're even a game below that or two games below that, you may be in the running all the way until the end. But at the end of the day, you're going to be putting a Manning in a position where they have to take a leap of faith when they don't have to. I mean, whatever it is that Arch Manning does, he doesn't have to take any risks. And without a little bit of proof on the field, Texas versus these other schools, I think from that it won't be risky as a quarterback because Sarkeesian's history as a quarterback developer is so long there's so many names but again the texas brand humpty dumpty's got to be put back together again a little bit and i think in order to completely get out of the friend zone with arch manning if you're texas you've got to have a bit of a splash in year one last thing i'll say catch and i you know I'll, i'll my last sentiments i'll close on this I totally agree with what you're saying. And I also think one thing that's going to be important in there, uh, not including the wins, is how the starting quarterback looks this season. So whether it's Casey Thompson, Hudson Card, they they have to be able to do that, right? Because it'll be easy to recruit against, you know, what he did at Alabama. Because there was, oh, it was Nick Saban. I mean, he, you know, it's to go. I mean, it's, it is what it is. What did he do? when he was at Texas, what did he do with, with a Hudson card? What did he do with a Casey Thompson? That's going to matter. So how those guys perform on the field, how they look on the field, the numbers that they put up, because don't forget the university of Texas over the last, what, 2009 has had two quarterbacks drafted one guy in the sixth round. And of course, Colt McCoy in 2009. So, you know, that Casey Thompson's performance and, and, and or Hudson Card's performance is will also matter a lot this season. He will need Arch will need to see something from those guys and something from this offense that has him saying, "Okay, that sounds good. I can go there and ball and put up some numbers." It's got to look. It's got to look good. That's the last and, thing I'll say on it. And, and my final point to follow up your final point would simply be this: the good news about that situation, I think, if you're Texas is that Casey Thompson and or Hudson Card's success as players won't prohibit you from getting Arch Manning. So this isn't, it's not the quarterback in the class before. I mean, by the time Arch Manning shows up, at worst, I think you'd be talking about a Hudson Card who would be in his third year as a starter and fourth year as a player, at worst, when Manning shows up, at which point, you know, Manning red shirts or plays as a freshman, but knows that the depth chart's completely wide open in year two, or Casey Thompson is the starter and is either around for kind of the, the exact same amount of time and or leaves in what would be Arch's freshman season. So the good news is the guys on campus, their success is only going to benefit Texas. It, it, this wouldn't be a situation where somebody's it, – and Oklahoma is in a little bit of this situation too. Now with Spencer Rattler, his recruitment might have impacted somebody a year ago, but now Oklahoma is able to look at it and say, well, he's going to be an NFL draft pick, maybe the first pick in next year's draft. So he's no longer in the scaring off recruit game the way Quinn Ewers in a 2023 class will likely scare away a guy, you know, Ohio state's name, not mentioned much in the arch Manning article at this point. And I think, or Oklahoma for that matter, you know, and I don't think these things happen by accident. Those would be probably the two big time schools across the country that on paper are going to be situated just fine without Archie Manning. Uh, But anyway, look, 
consider this the first of what may be 97 videos <laughs> dedicated <laughs> to Arch Manning between now and the time he makes his decision. And if he would ever pick Texas, we just do a daily Arch Manning video. Yeah. Uh, but for myself and Anwar Richardson, knowing that this is the first of what will be many videos. Hey, Art, well, hey, Manning family, thank you for always, you never stop providing content for the content. Just like people that need content can, in football can always count on the Mannings. All, it just, it never stops. It's amazing. It, I, I bow down. Lots of football. I bow down in awe of the man. I'm telling you, I covered Eli on war. I, I covered Eli Manning. And now Eli's retired and may or may not be going to the NFL Hall of Fame. And here comes another. <laughs> I mean, oh, it's it, it's crazy. I, I I was I was there in the Super Bowl for for the catch that that Eli threw. So I mean I've I've been see, been seeing them for years. I I remember being in you know, I, said, I remember being in Florida. You know what's about old? I remember being in Florida and in Peyton coming to the swamp and 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 watching those games. And I, so I remember Peyton back then. And and, and I, I don't want to piss off the Manning family by going there because that's probably a, a sore subject, but. I, that's how that's how far back it goes um, for for there. By the way, guys, I grew up as an FSU fan, so I have no I, I'm don't you have you no know. dog in that hunt. I got you. Yeah, I got and no the, dog in that hunt. I was an FSU is, like, because, fan. because he's Cooper's kid, right? It just you know that Eli and Peyton are going to have kids that become quarterbacks. Oh so yeah, this yeah. is the first. He this just feels like the first time we're going to talk about a Manning in this new generation. He was just going to be the oldest guy. They're like the ball family. Like, there's going to be like three of them probably in the next decade. And it'll be a lot of fun. I mean. And, and, and maybe years from now, Arch will be on SNL <laughs> like, like <yes>. Peyton was. <laughs> and we'll do something great there. That dad, by, by the way, talk about a badass. Like the. Arch Archie Manning, that's a bad dude. That that's a that's another t- podcast or another video. And we just got into his career there in the man. That he was a, that that they they're a bunch of badasses. I gotta give him credit. I mean, they're about as money in the bank as money in the bank. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Jordan had kids. Jordan had kids. He had sons. Yeah. But I mean, the Mannings, like we know, like, oh, if it's a Manning, it's yeah, that's money in the bank. <laughs> I mean. If you could, he it, it feels like if you could buy stock, there's no better stock than the next Manning coming yes. up through the high school yes. ranks, getting in, going into college. Like that's that would be better than Bitcoin right now. Definitely better than Bitcoin right now. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, I don't, I don't know we'll ever, anyway. That to wrap it up because otherwise I can feel myself getting ready to drift for myself and Anwar Richardson. Uh, and thanks to the Manning family. Again, love the content. We'll do this again tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe. We'll love you if you do. Hugs and kisses, all that stuff. Later.